This is a video about Boone and the Bitter Springs Massacre. One of the first towns that we come upon after leaving Good Springs is the town of Novak. This town is distinguished by the large T-Rex right outside the hotel, which functions as a tourist attraction and a gift shop. If you visit the gift shop at night, at the top of the T-Rex you'll find a sniper there protecting the town. His name is Boone. God damn it. Don't sneak up on me like that. What do you want? He seems a little jumpy. Was he expecting visitors? Yeah, I guess maybe I am. But not like you. Huh. Maybe it should have been you I was expecting all along. Why are you here? Oh, I just like meeting new people. I think you better leave. Come on, man. I'm just making friendly conversation. I don't have friends here. Well, I'm not from here, buddy. No. No, you're not, are you? Maybe you shouldn't go. Not just yet. I need someone I can trust. You're a stranger. That's a start. This town. Nobody looks me straight in the eye anymore. I want you to find something out for me. I don't know if there's anything to find, but I need someone to try. My wife was taken from our home by Legion slavers one night while I was on watch. They knew when to come and what route to take, and they only took Carla. Someone set it up. I don't know who. Whoa, this went dark fast. Is he trying to track down his wife? My wife's dead. I want the son of a bitch who sold her. How does he know his wife is dead? I know, all right. That's all you need to know. Okay, so let's say I find this person. What then? Bring him out in front of the nest here while I'm on duty. I work nights. I'll give you my NCR beret to put on. It'll be our signal so I know you're standing with him. And I'll take care of the rest. I need to do this myself. All right, Boone. I'll see what I can do. Good. I'll make it worth your while. And one more thing. We shouldn't speak again. Not until it's over. No one in town knows that I know what happened to my wife. Best they never know. Or the Legion will be after me next. If the Legion kidnapped his wife, that's serious business and I have great sympathy for the man. I'm gonna channel my inner Nick Valentine and see what I can find out for him. We'll start by interviewing the inhabitants of Novak to see if anyone knows anything. The first man we talk to is Cliff Briscoe, the proprietor of the gift shop in this dinosaur. What does Cliff know about Boone's wife? Can't say we spoke much. Boone did most of the buying for him. She was in the store once, but she didn't stay long. Had a look on her face like she'd smelled something sour. But far as I can remember, the gift shop smelled fine. Well, fine as it always does. In one of the hotel rooms, we find Ranger Andy. Maybe he knows something. Carla was a knockout. Whenever Boone walked around with her, he always had this funny grin on his face like he couldn't believe his luck. I know we couldn't. That wasn't the only reason she stuck out, though. That girl never minced words. If she'd had better food or hospitality, she'd let you hear it. Trouble was, she usually had. I don't think she meant it. She really was a sweet girl. I think she just wanted to remind herself that there's still nicer places in this world than Novak. Who could blame her for that? It sounds like he's a good judge of human character. It also doesn't sound like he harbored anything against her. He's probably not the man we were looking for. Let's keep looking. Inside one of the other hotel rooms is Manny Vargas. Manny is Boone's friend. And during the day, he mans the sniper's nest at the top of the T-Rex, where we found Boone. I'm Manny. I'm on security detail here. You see a rifle barrel sticking out of the dinosaur's mouth, you got a 50-50 shot at me. Otherwise, it's Boone. Boone's a sniper, same as me. Used to spot for him when we were enlisted with the NCR. After we got out, I talked him into settling down here. So, here we are. I'd introduce you, but, uh, we're not so friendly right now. Hmm. Why are you on bad terms with Boone? Me and his wife, we didn't see eye to eye on some things. We had some pretty big arguments. One day, she turns up missing, and he hasn't said a word to me since. What did you and Carla argue about? Man, you name it. See, I grew up in North Vegas, me and my cousins. We were some bad seeds. Got in with a gang. I loved it. Then something happened, and I couldn't handle it anymore. So, I enlisted, earned my future, brought down my best friend to share that future with me. And here was this woman, who was too good for it, trying to take him away. So yeah, I didn't see eye to eye with the bitch. Seems like he's harboring some resentment. We can ask him if he had anything to do with Carla's disappearance. Believe me, when I heard the news, my first thought was, I owe somebody big. I figured Boone would come around after a while. But he hasn't. I'm starting to think that if he doesn't find her, things will never go back to the way they were. Well, how many people could have hated Carla? Man, everybody. That girl didn't have one friend in this whole town. She didn't want any. 
She wanted to sit in her room all day and make herself miserable, and she went out of her way to be rude. She upset a lot of people. You wouldn't have liked her either. Well, so far, if anyone had a reason to get rid of Carla, it would have been Manny. Manny was at one time Boone's best friend. But then Boone goes and marries Carla. Suddenly, Manny no longer has exclusive access to Boone. He's now competing with Boone's wife. Maybe he's a little bit jealous of the attention Boone gives to Carla. Next, we talk to the proprietor of this motel, Jeannie Mae Crawford. We find her in the front desk office. Well, welcome to you. You look tired from the road. Why don't you relax a spell? Let this fine town take care of you. We can ask her what she thought of Carla. How should I put it? I guess you could say she was kind of like a cactus flower. Real pretty to look at, but there was just no getting close to her. She never did take to living here. She liked the big lights and fast living of New Vegas. I got the feeling she was trying to get Boone to live with her, but I guess she got tired of waiting. I know he thinks she was kidnapped, but I'm not so sure she didn't just run off on her own. You could tell she was thinking about it ever since they arrived. So Jeannie Mae Crawford is painting a completely different picture of what we already know. Maybe Boone is making up the story of Carla being kidnapped by legionary slavers. Maybe he just can't face the reality that she left him. Well, the final man we're going to talk to lives in a shack on the outskirts of the town. His name is Nobark Noonan. Who sent you? I ain't talking. They tried to get me to talk before, but I didn't say nothing. And I don't aim to now, by gum. Why do people call him No Bark? Because they know I ain't just barking here. What I say is God bite, because it's the truth. Them quack doctors can say what they want about all the rad scorpion stings that done pierced my skull. And I know what I seen. Well, if he's really all that knowledgeable, maybe he can tell us something about the disappearance of Boone's wife. Seen it all. Seen shadowy folk come to his room and leave again in the middle of the night. Thought one might have gone in the lobby, too, for a spell. Could be that person went in to get something. Or used the john, maybe. Mighty interesting either way, you ask me. I thought it was cannibals, come to eat us all for sure. So I kept out of sight. But now I know better. Uh, okay. If not cannibals, who really did kidnap the wife? More rat men come up from the underneath to steal young women with promises of riches and fancy mud mansions with all the latest designer appliances. They covered our lady folks' long hair for wigs, it said, being either bald or balding themselves. Right. Okay, so we've got the testimony of a half-crazy man who thinks mole rat men are invading towns. But he does give us the only other lead we have. He said he saw a shadowy figure enter the hotel front desk. Maybe if we go back, we can find something. If we go back at night, Jeannie Mae Crawford has retired to her bedroom for the evening. Behind the front desk is a locked safe. Perhaps here we can find what we need. Inside, we find a holotape named Bill of Sale the contents of which are shocking. We learn that the Legion came by and offered to purchase Carla from Jeannie Mae Crawford. Jeannie Mae agreed and gave the Legion exclusive rights of ownership and sale of the slave Carla for 1,000 bottle caps. And most tragically, the rights of her unborn child. They paid an additional 500 bottle caps for the baby. They planned to sell the slaves in a slave auction, likely selling the woman to a lifetime of sexual servitude. Then their plans are to raise the child when it's born as their own property and pay Jeannie Mae an additional 500 bottle caps when the child matures. Signed, Scribonius Libo Drusus. So Boone was right all along. Jeannie May, annoyed at Carla because Carla was a bit of a snob, got in touch with the Legion and sold her as a slave and her unborn child. This is one of the most horrifying things I've heard. Boone has a right to know, and he has the right to justice. At dawn, just before day breaks, while Boone is still inside the dinosaur, we can continue with our plan and bring Jeannie May with us outside. Okay, if that's what you think. Jeannie May surprisingly agrees with no questions asked. She walks out and stands in front of the dinosaur. As we arranged, we put on the beret, and Boone takes his shot. In a world without any form of institutionalized justice, this is the closest thing Boone and his family will ever get to seeing it. 
back in the dinosaur, we can go up to the sniper's nest and talk with Boone. That's it then. How did you know? Now, there are a number of options here. If we choose any of the options that don't have evidence, Boone becomes upset. He realizes that he basically killed someone without any proof. But we actually have proof. We found the bill of sale and we can give it to Boone. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. It'd be like them to keep paperwork. Here, this is all I can give. I think our dealings are done here. Boone, what are you going to do after this? I don't know. I won't be staying, I know that. Don't see much point in anything right now, except hunting legionaries. Maybe I'll wander. Like you. You know what? Come with me. Let's go after the Legion together. You don't want to do that. We'll kill more if there's two of us. Yeah, that might be true. That's reason enough for me to take you up on it, I suppose. But this isn't gonna end well. Fine. Let's get out of here. Boone joins our company and we get his companion perk, Spotter, which highlights living targets in red, making them easier to spot in the dark. We can then talk with him to try and find out more about his personal story. He said he knew that his wife was dead, but how? You got no right asking me that. Drop it. But we just want to know you better, Boone. You don't know what you're asking. Just let it go for now. Carla's dead. That's all you need to know. The Legion's the only thing I want on my mind right now. Sensitive topic, okay. Well, we can revisit that later. What about your buddy, Manny Vargas? He was a good spotter. Weren't you also friends? Yeah, we were. But not anymore. No. If we travel with Boone for a while, we can talk with him again about Manny Vargas. He tells us why he's no longer friends. When Carla went missing, he was the first person I told. He tried to hide it, but I could tell right away. He was glad. Well, I'd suddenly understand why he no longer wants to be friends with Manny. Now, Boone enlisted in the NCR with Manny Vargas, and they also joined the same regiment, the 1st Recon Battalion. Manny Vargas tells us a little bit more about what caused him to leave the NCR. Uh, well, I just felt like it was time, you know? Wanted to have a home. Plus, I was up at Camp Golf when Bitter Springs went down. I faked like I was sick to get out of going because I knew some of the people there. But when everybody came back, nobody would tell me what happened, and people would call us murderers sometimes when we showed up to secure towns. What exactly happened at Bitter Springs? I still don't know exactly. Just that a lot of people died who didn't want to be a part of the fighting at all. I don't blame anybody for it. There's so much chaos when you're fighting. You're lucky not to shoot your own guys. But it did take something out of it for me. It just wasn't the same. So when it came time to re-enlist, I just took my papers and walked. Well, Manny doesn't seem to know, but Boone might have more information for us. I was in a lot of places with First Recon. I don't really remember. Surely you can tell me a bit more about Bitter Springs. That part of my life's over now. And so is his discussion. Right, he's not ready. But we can learn more about Bitter Springs and what actually went on there by talking with other people we find in the Mojave Wasteland. When we visit Camp McCarran, we find an NCR First Recon sniper there named Sergeant Bitterroot. I'm Bitterroot, First Recon. You got a reason to talk to me? Bitterroot is an interesting name. You trying to start trouble? Or do you really not know where I got that name? It's a con name. You know, the great cons? That's what my parents were. I figured I grew up around the bastards. They owed me a name after all they put me through. What happened to his parents? They're dead. Got themselves killed at Bitter Springs. Served them right if you ask me. It was a massacre. That's what a lot of NCR folk will tell you. Most of them feel plenty bad about what happened. But I was there. Saw it myself. I don't care what anybody says. The cons asked for Bitter Springs. They wouldn't leave the NCRB. My damn parents, too. They were just as bad as the rest. You're not fully grown till you've taken a beat down. Everybody gathers around and hits you till you're damn near dead. After that, if you haven't begged for mercy, you get to choose a new name. One you'll use for the rest of your life. When NCR slaughtered the cons of Bitter Springs, I hadn't got my beat down yet. I was still too young. The way I see it, Bitter Springs was my beat down. So afterward, I gave myself a name. It's all I got from the cons. It's all I ever want. If he was there, how did he survive? Guess I could tell a pretty good story if I had a mind. But the truth is, I don't know. Just got lucky. They brought me to Daughtry after the battle. He was just a captain back then. Guess he saw something in me. He knew I didn't belong with the cons. Maybe he felt bad, too. 
about how his men killed my folks. I told him he did me a service, but he didn't believe me. Still doesn't. He's a good man, Daughtry. Doesn't act like it sometimes, I know. But he didn't have to take me in. Surely he doesn't really mean everything he's said about his parents. Beg pardon, ma'am, but you never met my parents. My dad he got himself fucked up every chance he got. Always started with folk for no reason. Hell, he was the one who taught me to shoot. You know how? By taking pot shots at NCR. And not just soldiers. Civilians, too. Even kids. Then he'd get high with his buddies and swap tales about the folk they killed. Bunch of animals. And my mom? A couple of times she tried to sell me to some waster just to score some jet. Even the other cons said she was useless. Only reason they kept her around was because she was a... <clears throat> How'd my dad say it? A smoking piece of ass. We learned from Major Daughtry that they didn't know that there were women, children, and non-combatants at Bitter Springs. They were already attacking it when his superior found out. But his superior froze. He didn't respond when he heard the news. And that's when Major Daughtry took command of Bitter Springs. He felt so guilty after what happened there that he did his best to care for the survivors. He took Bitterroot under his wing, and Daughtry became a surrogate father to Bitterroot. But so far, we've only talked to NCR members about the Bitter Springs Massacre. Let's hear what Papa Khan, the leader of the Khans, the very people who were massacred, has to say about it. The great Khans came east, out of the NCR 14 years ago. We ruled the wastes then, and called no man master. But we underestimated the families of the Strip, and they drove us back to Bitter Springs, where we remained until the NCR arrived and drove us here. They allied with Mr. House, the self-proclaimed master of New Vegas, he supported them with the resources of New Vegas. Weapons, technology, caps. They were better equipped, and we could not stand against them. When the NCR came to the Mojave, we thought they would be easy pickings. We raided their caravans, their towns, their camps. They couldn't stop us. At least that's what we thought. They tracked us to Bitter Springs and surrounded us. When our children, our sick and old, fled through a nearby pass... The NCR gunned them down. Oh, they claimed it was a miscommunication, but tell that to those who saw our families butchered. Tell it to the survivors who were banished here. So the Great Khans invaded the Mojave Wasteland, but were pushed back by House and the Casinos. Then when the NCR arrived, they started harassing NCR settlements. It was only after that aggression that the NCR responded. That's why the NCR went to Bitter Springs, to stamp out raids from the Great Khans. The Bitter Springs Massacre is seared into the memories of the Great Khans. If you visit Red Rock Canyon with Boone in your company, they'll call him a murderer. You know you're traveling with a fucking murderer? It's understandable how they feel, but don't they realize that if it weren't for their raider-like behavior to begin with, that the NCR would never have even been there? Still... That's no excuse to murder innocent women, children, and non-combatants. And this helps us understand why Boone doesn't want to talk about it. As we travel with Boone, we rack up companion points with him that unlocks more of his history. He begins to trust you more and more the longer you work together. After confronting Volpe's Inculta at Nipton, we can ask him again about what happened at Bitter Springs. Look, we've done some traveling together, but we're not exactly comrades in arms. I'm not ready to swap war stories. Sounds like he's still not ready. What would cause him to open up? Maybe killing more legionaries? I don't know. Couldn't hurt. Sounds like we know what we have to do. We continue to fight the Legion everywhere we find them. After freeing the captive slaves at the Legionary camp just outside of Nipton, Boone opens up just a little bit more. They got what they had coming. Glad we were the ones to deliver it. Pisses me off that Legion slavers can just operate on NCR turf like that. If we hadn't caught up to them, they'd probably have a clear path to the river. No one to stop them. There should be patrols. Checkpoints. We got greedy, overstretched. Now our own territory is insecure. Sounds like even though Boone is no longer a member of the NCR, he still has sympathies with what the NCR is trying to do in the Mojave Wasteland. He has no love for the Legion, and is glad to see the NCR standing against them. When we get to Nelson, Ranger Milo greets us and asks us to kill the crucified NCR soldiers that the Legion has in their camp. He calls this a mercy killing, but if we agree to do it, Boone has other ideas. To hell with mercy killing. We're getting those guys out of there. 
Sounds like Boone disagrees with the NCR on this point. He is fed up with mercy killings. If we go down into the camp and instead of killing them, release them, Boone approves. Mercy killing's a last resort. I'm glad you recognized we had options. Sounds like he has some very deep-rooted feelings about mercy killings. Mercy killing is expected of NCR snipers. The Legion likes to torture their prisoners within sight of NCR positions. We get called on to end it. I've had my share. Some of them, you think. Maybe you could have gotten them out. Maybe it's not the Legion that got them killed. Maybe it's your orders and you following them. I think I may begin to understand a little bit more about what might have happened to his wife. At this point, we can ask him about it. I don't see what this helps. She's dead. We can convince him that by opening up to us, we're going to be a more effective team. <sighs> All right. She... I tracked her down. Southeast, near the river. They were selling her. Saw it through my scope. Whole place swarming with legion, hundreds of them. Bidding for things no man has a right to. I just had my rifle with me. Just me against all of them. So I took the shot. He killed his own wife and unborn child? Why didn't he try to rescue her? There was never any saving her. They'd have taken her where I couldn't follow. What I did, that was the only rescue. What they do to women, that's worse than death. There was no choice in what I did. It was more like being forced to watch something you can't stop. I was meant to pull that trigger. It was a mistake to think I could escape it. You take out a debt. It's only a matter of time before someone comes collecting. Things just finally caught up with me. All this was only ever going to play out one way. It still is. I don't have any say. All I can do is wait for it to be done with me. Boone makes it sound like his wife was fated to die. It was gonna be something. If I'd never met Carla, it would have been something else. I should have never gotten close to her. I've got bad things coming to me. You better keep your distance too. Why does he think he's got bad things coming for him? <sighs> because fair is fair. And he doesn't elaborate after that. When I heard that he killed his own wife, my heart sank. Didn't really know what to think. How do you respond to something like that? But then I gotta put myself in his shoes. He's there at Cottonwood Cove. He sees his pregnant wife being sold like a slab of meat to people who would have used her, to people who would have done God knows what to his child. What would I have done in his shoes? If I had tried to save her, could I even have killed every legionary as a sniper? What if I ran out of bullets? Maybe it would have been suicide to try and take on an entire legion camp by oneself. I'm sure those are thoughts that have been going through Boone's mind. But clearly he has regrets. Since then, he's lost a taste for mercy killing. In his mind, it was a mercy killing to kill his wife. That's what the NCR trained him to do. Do. But ever since that moment, he's had second thoughts. What if he could have saved her? What if he could have done something? And that's why when we get to Nelson, he doesn't want to put those NCR soldiers out of their misery. He wants to save them. The further away Boone gets from his NCR days, he's evolving maturing as a human being, and he's no longer acting or thinking the way that he was programmed to by the NCR. He mentioned that he should never have gotten together with Carla. Being around him is a bad idea. Maybe he thinks that fate is out to get him, to punish him for something that he did. I have a hunch that this all ties back to Bitter Springs. Once we get to Cottonwood Cove and exterminate the Legion presence there and free the captives, we can talk with Boone a little bit more about what really happened at Bitter Springs. There was a miscommunication. That's how they wrote it up in the report. We did what we were there to do. A lot of people got killed. That's war. Maybe looking back, you do things differently, but that's not how it works. In the field, you hesitate, you or someone you care about will die. They teach that from day one. At last, it starts to make sense. It sounds like he regrets his actions. You don't come out of a tour of duty without regrets. It's best just not to think about it. The past is the past. Fate is out of his control. Why spend time worrying about it? Life has a way of punishing you for the mistakes you make. Big enough mistake, punishment can take a while. Mine's not over. We can try to convince him that there really is no such thing as fate. Life doesn't work that way. Sometimes people just run into a string of bad luck. 
That's what they tell you in the casinos, too. Because it's the only way to get you to buy back in. If people knew the truth, that something's watching you. Waiting to take it all away from you. And it never loses. That's all it's doing now. Waiting for me to buy back in. If he's really dead set on believing that he's being punished by fate for what he did at Bitter Springs, we can try to convince him that there may be a way to make an amends for the mistakes that he's done. A murderer who does good deeds is still a murderer. And he'll still get his judgment. I left the NCR when my tour was up. Had enough of war. And decided I was going to start over. None of it made a difference in the end. How does he know that his punishment isn't over? Because I'm still alive. The guilt is really gnawing at his conscience. Does he think about Bitter Springs a lot? Yeah. Always. Even when I sleep. Well, if that's true, maybe the best solution is to go back there and confront your demons. I don't think so. It won't change anything. And that's a memory I don't want refreshed. Boone is really set in his mind. Fate is coming for him. He's a murderer, despite his orders, despite being trained as a soldier, and he needs to pay. After this conversation, Boone quickly pulls us aside. Hey, I thought some more about what you said. I think maybe you're right. Maybe I should go to Bitter Springs. I don't know what I'm hoping to find there. Okay, what changed your mind? Nothing. Dream. I'm just tired of thinking about it. He's being haunted in his dreams. All right, Boone. We'll stop by Bitter Springs. I hope this isn't a mistake. After this conversation, we get the quest, I forgot to remember, to forget. And at last, we make our way to Bitter Springs, the site of the infamous Bitter Springs Massacre. As we approach, we see caravans, the former homes of the great Khans who lived here. Walking up the hill towards the campsite, we see that the NCR flag is flying upside down. When we get close, Boone tells us that we've come to the right place. This is the place. We got sent from Camp Golf looking for some cons who'd been making trouble with one of our settlements. I guess one of the settlers was connected because we sent everything we had. We figured this was a gang hideout, but they led us to their home. There's a ridge called Coyote Tail on the south side. That's where we set up. Boone wants to revisit the place where he stood and massacred so many innocent people. He wants us to go to Coyote Tail Ridge. But first, let's find out why the flag is being flown upside down. As we explore, we don't find a whole lot of soldiers. Instead, we find a lot of refugees. Where's my mommy? The NCR have erected a small presence here. The refugees sleep in small tents and shacks on the lower portion of the town. At the very top, we find the NCR tents. The first big tent is the medical tent. Up the hill, we find the NCR headquarters tent. And it's there, sitting on a bench by the fire, where we find Captain Giles. This is the Bitter Springs refugee camp. We've been maintaining it for a few years now, ever since Caesar's Legion started seriously pushing west. Most of the people here were displaced by the Legion's advance. At first, there weren't many. But lately, it's been more than we can handle. This whole area used to be a Great Khan encampment before they relocated to Red Rock Canyon. We just haven't had the manpower to clean it all up yet. We can ask her why the flag is flying upside down. It's a distress call. This camp is in bad shape, and if we don't get relief soon, I don't know what will happen. At this point, I'll take anything you can give me. We need more troops, fresh supplies, and medical relief. As if that wasn't enough, someone's been coming out of the mountains at night, stealing supplies and picking off my people. Where should we go to help get new troops stationed here? I don't know. The NCR's stretched thin as it is. I've put in requests at Camp Golf, Forlorn Hope, McCarran, but things are no better there. Maybe if their situations improved, they'd have men to spare. Or maybe they'd listen to someone with a reputation for helping the NCR. Alright, well what kind of supplies do you need? Food, blankets, clothes, tools. The army used to ship out caches of supplies regularly. But with the Legion so active, we haven't gotten any in months. What about medicine? How can we help there? You'll want to talk to Lieutenant Markland about that. He's our medical officer. He should be down at the medical tent now. And did she say someone was killing refugees? It started about six months ago. At first it was just supplies going missing. We figured it was refugees. Then people started dying. Always a single bullet to the head. Always from extreme range. We've lost eight refugees and three soldiers to this son of a bitch. We know he must be hiding out in one of the caves up in the mountains. But I don't have enough men to send out looking for him. 
Going down the hill to the medical tent, we find Lieutenant Markland. Hey, if you can help, I'll take whatever I can get. Doctor's bags would be a huge help, but what I really need are medical texts. I'm not trained to deal with major psychological trauma, and we've got a lot of kids in this camp. I'm an army field medic. I can treat bullet wounds, shrapnel, trench foot, no problem. But this, the kids and the psychological trauma and all the rest, is out of my league. Where can we find these books? Caravan companies are probably your best bet. Smaller traders aren't likely to have anything that esoteric. All right, we're gonna get them for you. Thank you. Any help you can give would be a godsend. Here, we can go ahead and give him doctor's bags from our inventory. Giving him three doctor's bags grants us the largest amount of karma. Thank you. This will keep us well stocked for a good long while. So Bitter Springs is now a home to refugees, children who are orphans because of the Legion, peoples whose homes have been ransacked and burned by the Legion. These are people who have no place to go, but the NCR accepts them. The NCR finds a place for them. This isn't the only refugee camp we find that is run by the NCR. House doesn't have a refugee camp. The Great Khans don't have a refugee camp. The Brotherhood doesn't have a refugee camp. The Legion certainly doesn't care for these people. The only ones who do are the NCR. The first place we need to go to resupply Bitter Springs is to check out the Great Khan supply caves in the hills above the camp. In the first cave, we have to clear it of ants and other bugs. And it's here that we find a locked gate. Behind the locked gate is a radioactive supply cache. That's because this cave is filled with radioactive barrels. Looks like some unscrupulous company before the war used this cave to dispose of their nuclear waste. Back outside and heading up the trail, we find the second cave, and it's in here that we have to kill a bunch of fire geckos. After clearing the cave, we find another locked gate, and behind it, we find another Great Khan supply cache. In the final cave, as we enter, we get attacked by a man named Oscar Velasco. Great Khan, looks like. Guess he fought at Bitter Springs, or saw it happen. Oh, this was a Great Khan. This is the guy who's been sniping refugees and NCR troops for the past three years. He probably opened fire on us because we're dressed like NCR. Let's try this again, but this time we're gonna leave Boone outside and we're gonna take off our NCR uniform. And this time, Oscar is willing to talk with us. Who are you? How did you find this place? Now, we can kill him right away, a fitting payment for killing so many helpless refugees, or we can talk with him to try and figure out his motives. Refugee camp? Is that what they're calling it? Good old NCR. They can whitewash anything. Let me tell you something. That refugee camp, it's built on the blood and tears of my people. Nobody likes to talk about it, but I remember. We were the flails of God, the scourge of the Mojave, the best warriors and raiders in the wasteland, until the NCR tracked us back to Bitter Springs. The main force hit the canyon by surprise. While our warriors tried to hold them off, we sent our women, our children, our old, through the Red Pass. NCR's first recon battalion was waiting for them on Coyote Tail Ridge. No con left alive. That was the order. My family. Well, aside from that horrible voice acting there at the end, we can ask him why he's been hiding here for three years and killing people who are not even involved in the Bitter Springs Massacre. For revenge, the NCR committed an atrocity here. An atrocity that they tried to bury and forget. I'm going to remind them. It's here where we can either kill him or pass a speech check to convince him that killing helpless, harmless refugees in a refugee camp isn't getting him any vengeance. I know that, but what else can I do? We have two options here. We can stoke the embers of his anger and convince him to take the fight directly to the NCR. You're right. A Khan's vengeance should be direct and bloody. No more skulking in caves. I'll remind the NCR why they feared us. He hops up and leaves the cave. The next time we arrive at Camp McCarran, we find Oscar Valesco attacking the guards outside. Oscar is surprisingly well armed, and with a grenade rifle, he takes out all of the guards. I watched him kill not only the guards stationed outside, but even guards for the Crimson Caravan. Once dead, he goes into Camp Over McCarran here. to continue the fight. But you the camp like itself that? is too much for one man crazed by vengeance. At last, the NCR finally puts him down. On his body, we find a key to the final supply cache and some pretty powerful Great Khan armor, but choosing this method yields negative karma. So instead, we can choose the other option and convince him to abandon this mad scheme and go back to the Great Khans at Red Rock Canyon. Maybe. Maybe you're right.
Maybe three years is vengeance enough. Thank you for helping me see that. Here, this will unlock the supply caches we left in caves around these mountains. You might get some use out of them. He gives us a key to this final supply cache and makes his way to the Great Khan encampment at Red Rock Canyon. We can then use the key to unlock the final security gate and loot the final Great Khan supply cache. Back at Bitter Springs, we can talk with Captain Giles and tell her that we got rid of the Great Khan sniper. You did? Who was it? Any information you could give me would be a big help for my reports. We can tell her about Oscar Valesco, and in so doing learn more about what she thinks of the Bitter Springs Massacre. Ah, oh, I should have expected as much. There's still a lot of bad blood between the Khans and the NCR ever since the incident here. About three years ago, this canyon was the main encampment for the Great Khans. NCR's first recon tracked them here after a raid and made an attack. There was a communication mix-up that resulted in some non-combatants being killed. It was a tragic mistake, but we've done all we can to make amends. We provided medical aid to the wounded, all the wounded, and permitted the cons to resettle at Red Rock Canyon. So it looks like it really was a communications error. The massacre was an accident. But of course, that doesn't bring back the dead women and children. And that doesn't end Boone's guilt. If we're feeling vindictive, if we think she should pay, we can give her the radioactive supply cache that we found. If we do, the area around the main camp becomes irradiated. You can see I'm gaining radiation by standing here. And if we come back another day, we see that the radiation extends even to the refugees. I coughed up blood this morning. I think I'm really sick. By choosing this option, we're not only enacting revenge against the NCR, but we're making innocent refugees sick. Instead, we can pass a science check to give her instructions on how to remove the radiation from the supply cache. We do have some spare radex in the supply tent. That might work. Thank you. And then we can give her the rest of the Great Con supply caches. Where did you get this? You know what? It doesn't even matter. Thank you. This will be a tremendous help. So all we need to do now is find some reinforcements. Heading back to Camp McCarran, we can go into the airport and talk directly with Colonel James Shu. If we have a high enough reputation with the NCR, Colonel Shu will gladly agree to send more troops to Bitter Springs. I appreciate your concern for Bitter Springs. You've already been quite helpful to the NCR. I suppose it's only right to return the favor. While we're in the area, we can go to the Crimson Caravan Company and talk with the merchant Blake. On his inventory, we find two books, Stress and the Modern Refugee, A Primer, and Tiny Tiny Babies, All You Need to Know About Pediatric Medicine. These are the books we need to bring back to Lieutenant Markland at Bitter Springs so that he has the tools he needs to treat psychological trauma. Then we can travel to Camp Golf. In one of the tents outside the main building of Camp Golf, we find Sergeant McCready and it is he that we can convince to send more troops to Bitter Springs. Hey, you're a damn fine soldier, and word on the grapevine is that you're already some kind of hero. You got yourself a deal. And finally, we can visit Camp Forlorn Hope. We've already spent a great deal of time there, and Major Pilati knows us personally. I'll be honest. The Legion has me worried here, but I think I can spare some soldiers. Consider your request granted. Once done, we can go back to Bitter Springs and hand the books over to Lieutenant Markland. Both of them? Wow, that's very resourceful. Thank you. I think that should just about cover us. I really don't know how to thank you. You're bringing me these supplies saved a lot of people. And taking a look at the flag, we now see that it's flying right side up. It looks like the troops have arrived. Heading back up to talk with Captain Giles, we see that she's sitting on a bench surrounded by more NCR troopers. Thanks to your help, I think Bitter Springs has a real shot at surviving. I can't offer much of a reward, but know that the NCR is very grateful. Well, we've helped out the NCR here at Bitter Springs. We've made it a more secure place for refugees of the Mojave Wasteland to find shelter. This wasn't just about the NCR. This was about helping everyday people to find shelter in this wasteland war-torn by the Legion. Next, we need to take Boone to Coyote Ridge. On our way, we pass through a cemetery. Christ. They put the graveyard here. He says this because this is the very valley that the Great Khan women, children, and non-combatants fled through to escape the NCR. 
This is where he and the other first recon snipers shot them dead. The NCR buried them right where they fell. Sitting on some of the graves, we can see some of the helmets and hats that the Great Cons at one time had used. Just down the hill, past the Bitter Springs sign, we find an outcropping of rock jutting from the earth. This is Coyote Tail Ridge, with a great vantage point of the graveyard we just walked through. And it's here where Boone takes us aside. Canyon 37. That's what the NCR calls the pass down there. It was the Khan's only escape, so we set up here to guard it while the main force attacked from the front. Standing orders were to shoot on sight. Main force got spotted too soon. We heard shooting. And Khan started coming through Canyon 37 in bunches. It was all wrong, though. Women, kids, elderly. Wounded started coming through, too. We radioed to confirm our orders, but command didn't get what we were seeing. They told us to shoot till we were out of ammo, so that's what we did. We can respond to this a number of ways, but none of them make Boone feel any better. We could say that he was just following orders like a good soldier. Yeah, well, I'm not a soldier anymore. Those rules don't seem like much of an excuse now. Or we could set ourselves apart and say that that's not something we would have ever done. Maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't have either at one point. But that's why they train you. Break you down to your automatic... Or we could get really hard on Boone and say, how could you kill innocent people like that? For the cons, any of them can be dangerous. There's a lot you can't see through a scope. Still, I often wonder the same thing. Or we can say that what he did was a good thing, and his only mistake was not bringing enough ammo. No. I only would have needed one bullet to do things right that day. By saying this, he's admitting that he should have shot himself. Only by killing himself could he have avoided massacring so many innocent people. If we choose this last option, we lose karma. And it's interesting to note that Boone sticks his ground. He really has changed as a person. He's genuinely ashamed of what he did. Anyway, I don't know why we're here. Thought maybe it'd help me see things better. I'd like to stay here for the night. Think some things over. If we agree to stay the night, the screen goes dark. But just before dawn breaks, Boone wakes us up. Something's wrong. Got a group coming our way. Looks like a Legion raiding party. It's big. Might be too big, even for us. If you want out, I won't blame you, but I'm gonna stay. See if I can hold them off. Sounds like the end is here for Boone. This is what Boone has long been waiting for. Why would the Legion be here at Bitter Springs to begin with? Easy target for grabbing slaves. Bunch of refugees, just a few soldiers defending it. I don't think they're here for us. Too bad. Would have made me feel good about myself. He doesn't sound very surprised. I'm not. Always figured this was how it was going to end for me. Just didn't know when. That day you showed up in Novak, I had a feeling I was supposed to go with you. That it was time to end all this. And now I know. You know what? I'm glad the Legion are attacking. This saves us the trouble of having to find them. <laughs> if only it was this easy all the time. Well then, Boone, what are we waiting for? Tell the truth. I think this is exactly what I've been waiting for. The Legion attacks Bitter Springs in three waves, but they were not expecting a first recon sniper to be sleeping on a hillside near Bitter Springs. Boone woke us up in the middle of the night as dawn was about to break, and we can climb up the hill behind the Legionaries and snipe them as they attack the town. The Legion is indiscriminate. They fire upon refugee and NCR soldier alike. But if we are quick, we can kill every Legionary before they do much damage to the town. We need to get to the camp before they do. By this time, the sun has begun to rise. The second wave of legionaries comes from the direction of Lake Mead. If we are quick, we can intercept them at the caravans. It's clear that the legion are tracking their way to Bitter Springs using their legion mongrels. They are the first ones that come over the ridge and we can dispatch them quickly. The rest of the legionaries use the caravans and trucks as cover to shoot at us from. We can surprise them by climbing the ridge overlooking the caravan park and snipe at them where we have the high ground. More coming. Once dead, the third wave strikes. These legionaries race through the canyon graveyard, and they have quite a head start. We have to run all the way from the caravans near the shore of Lake Mead, but once they are within range, we can snipe at them to kill as many as we possibly can in this canyon before they reach the camp. I quickly ran out of medicine with my medicine stick, so I had to take out my pistol to finish off the mongrels. 
together, Boone and I were able to kill off most of these legionaries, but not all of them. Some had actually managed to reach the camp, and so we raced around the corner to find them opening fire on the refugees in the camp. The refugees flee in all directions, and we can chase down these legionaries who attempt to use the tents and outhouses as cover. In the ensuing battle in my game, the Legion managed to kill two NCR troopers and one refugee. We weren't fast enough, but at least we survived. And at this, Boone is surprised. Hmm. <laughs> we made it through after all. Not sure what to make of that. We can ask him why he wasn't sure. I thought my time had come. For a minute there, everything made sense. I could feel the end coming. I was ready for it. Now... Back where I was. Well, clearly he underestimated us. Guess I did. Guess I figured whatever we could handle, this time the Legion was going to send more. I should have died here a long time ago. When I spotted the Legionaries today, I thought I understood. Things were finally going to even out. But I'm still here and nothing's changed. Doesn't he know that as his partner, I wasn't going to let him come to harm? I don't mean disrespect. It's a hell of a thing having someone with your ability looking out for me. But I've come to believe there are things nobody can stop. I thought for sure that's what we'd finally come up against today. It would have made sense for things to end here. But now... I'm still waiting. Well, maybe it's just not your time. <sighs> God damn it. It's like I'm being toyed with. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about all this. You know what, Boone? How many times do I have to say this? There's no such thing as fate. You're not being judged. And nobody's punishing you. Sometimes... Things just happen. If that's how it is, there's not a lot of comfort in knowing it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about all this. The final option is to let him know that the guilt that he's living through, the guilt of what he did at Bitter Springs, is his punishment. Because the death that he seeks would be a mercy. No fate trying to punish him would let him die. I never thought of it that way. Always expected something more final. But maybe it is. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about all this. We have two final options. These options determine the rewards we get for completing this quest and the character of Boone from here on out. The first option is to let him know that he can't take back what he's done, but his sincere regret can give him the impetus he needs to try and do good in this world. I guess they brought us here. One less Legion raiding party running loose now. Never a bad thing, you can take my word for that. Still feels like I'm living on borrowed time. But I don't see any reason not to take a lot more of those sons of bitches with me. You got a point. There's still some things I can do before all this is over. If we choose this option, Boone gets the first recon survival armor. It's a handsome piece of armor that does not count against his carrying capacity. If we trade with him, we can actually take this off his inventory and use it ourselves. But you know what? I think it looks much better on Boone. So I'm going to leave it on Boone. The other option is to encourage Boone to wallow in his bitterness, in his self-pity, in his regret. The other option is to say that it's just war. People die. You're a fool to mourn their deaths, whether they be civilian or soldier. With the cons, the only difference between a soldier and a civilian is that the civilian is more likely to miss when he shoots at you. Maybe Bitter Springs just seem different. Maybe it's the same as killing legionaries. They'd have died whether or not they were soldiers. Whether or not I was there. Am I leaving the NCR hasn't stopped any wars or saved any lives? There's no controlling war. No sense regretting what you can't stop. This option keeps Boone in his fatalistic mindset. He can't ever take any joy in life. He can't ever forgive himself for his actions. He can't ever heal and try and make sense of what happened. Instead, he becomes bloodthirsty, and he only lives to kill the Legion. This option grants Boone the first recon assault armor. It has a completely different look, and wearing it, Boone is much more aggressive. It's different from the other set in that you cannot find it in his inventory. Unless you use console commands on the PC, there is no way for you to get this for yourself. This armor is just for Boone. It embodies Boone's unique hatred of the Legion and thirst for revenge. However, I'm of the mindset that everyone can heal, no matter what's happened in your life, what's been done to you, or what you've done to others. So in my game, I chose the first option. 
And that is the full story of our companion Boone and the Bitter Springs Massacre. We talked with a lot of people. There were a lot of moving parts to this story. What can we walk away with? Well, everyone interprets what he hears or sees in his or her own way. I'll tell you what I got out of this. The Great Khans were a simple raider tribe. They were not born in the Mojave Wasteland. They came here. They invaded it. And when they got here, they didn't make peace with the people who were here already. Instead, they made war upon them. However, it was a foolish war. They made war against House and the casinos at the Strip, and they lost. When the NCR arrived, they made war on NCR settlements. They took delight in raiding settlements and killing troopers and civilians alike. The Great Khans put the NCR in an uncomfortable position. They had two choices. The NCR could roll over and let the Great Khans do whatever they want to continue to terrorize the Mojave Wasteland, or they could stand up to the Great Khans. And that's what they chose to do. The NCR would have never met the Great Khans at Bitter Springs if it weren't for the aggression of the Great Khans. Yes, the NCR and the Great Khans have been longtime enemies, even in previous Fallout games. They were at odds. But the Great Khans instigated this fight. The NCR simply brought it to them. But at the end of the day, there was still a massacre of women, children, and innocence. It happened because of bad intel, but that doesn't mean that it's not the NCR's fault. What they did was horrible. What they did is inexcusable, and Boone is feeling guilt for all the right reasons. While sitting atop Coyote Trail Ridge, seeing the women and children and non-combatants flooding down the canyon, should he or could he have dropped his gun and walked away? Is he really responsible for sitting there and shooting after all of the training that he received by the NCR? That's a really tough one for me. It's hard for me to put myself in his shoes. I've never been in the military. I've never been in a fight like that. I don't know what it's like. I don't know what decisions I would make. Killing those innocents was clearly wrong. Boone pulled the trigger. He's clearly responsible. But I don't know if it's possible for him to have acted any other way. What he does have control over is how he responds moving forward. He left the NCR because he was sorry for what he did. He didn't want to be put in that position ever again. He didn't want to kill any more innocents. Both he and Manny Vargas left for the same reason. And as civilians, they went to the Las Vegas Strip, where Boone met and fell in love with Carla. Boone tried to rebuild his life. He tried to become a different person. He tried to do good in this world, which is why he and Manny Vargas and Carla moved to Novak to work as guards to keep those people safe. But after his wife and unborn child were kidnapped by the Legion, he developed this philosophy of fate. He believed that there was never going to be any escaping the punishment for what he did. He believes that the kidnapping of his wife and daughter were part of that punishment, and anyone who gets near to him, including the courier, could find themselves wrapped up in it. But even though he regrets his actions as a sniper, that day, at Bitter Springs, he still sees the NCR as a force of good in the Mojave Wasteland because the NCR is the only one standing up against Caesar's Legion. Coming east was about securing the land so people could live without fear. It's not always that simple, but I think the cause is still right. And God help us if they lose. Indeed, if you attack any NCR member with Boone as a companion, Boone takes you aside and puts a stop to it. Look, I know the NCR has problems, but I fought with those men. I'll be damned before I betray them. This stops right now. You can tell him that you're going to kill NCR anyway, and he turns hostile, forcing you to fight him. If you kill him, on his body you find a note. For Carla. Carla, if you're reading this, then you know. Sorry. Wanted to make it back home to you. The pension won't be much, but it should help you and the baby get by. I want you to remarry when you meet the right person. Don't want you to have to be on your own. Not sure the right way to say how I feel about you. I think you already know, though. Always seemed like you knew what I meant. Maybe better than I did. I wish I was there with you right now. There are things I couldn't tell you. Tried. Whatever you learn over time about my service in the NCR, I hope you can forgive me. Lastly, I know you were against it, but if it's a girl, I want her to be named after her mother. I know it's playing dirty to win the argument this way, but too bad. It's worth it. And it's here where we learn Boone's first name. Craig. Carla was the only one who really understood him. He's a quiet man. He's a tough man. He's not good with words. He's just good with guns. But Carla loved him. Even if she was a bit snobby, she still loved him. And when she was taken from him, it absolutely destroyed his life. 
He killed his own wife because he didn't want to see her sold and raped. He killed his own daughter because he didn't want to see her raised as a sex slave. I have a really hard time saying that Boone did the right thing at that moment. Would it have been better to kill himself in a suicidal attack, like Oscar Valesco might have done against the NCR at Camp McCarran? Or would it have been better to just let them live, to let them be sold as slaves and raped for the rest of their lives, until maybe in some far distant future he can find a way to save them? I don't know the answer to that question, and I'm not going to come down one way or another, because that's such a tough issue. Boone tried once to rebuild his life after the Bitter Springs Massacre, and it all fell apart. But hopefully, now that he has a partner in you, the two of you together can reshape the Mojave Wasteland for good. And maybe that'll give Boone some much-needed peace. Thank you all for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I publish a new video six days a week. Sometimes it's Fallout 4, sometimes it's Fallout New Vegas. This brings an end to my series on Boone, but I've got a whole lot more Fallout New Vegas lore to do. I'm going to be doing videos on all of the other companions, all of the other factions, yes, including the Legion. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss those videos, be sure to subscribe and click that bell notification button. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers can access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. And if you're interested in a t-shirt, I have a t-shirt shop. I've got images from Fallout 4 and Oxhorn inspired images, and you can find a link in the description below. But more than anything, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you Tuesday morning, bright and early, with a brand new video. One less legion